Gee, Pop, you sure missed a wonderful luncheon. Contradiction, please. Not having eaten, have missed nothing. I had turtle soup, chicken a la king, and three cream puffs. Then I had some ice cream. Please, stop. Mention of food more painful than surgeon's knife without anesthetic. Shall I get you medicine, Pop? Good dose of land, only effective medicine. <laughs> the bulletin board says we'll dock at four o'clock this afternoon. Only sight of dock can renew interest in life. You hear that? Yeah, it sounded like somebody calling for help. Help somebody get me out of here! In there. So sorry to intrude, but etiquette ignored when lady in distress. <sighs> I, I guess it must have locked accidentally. Chair on the doorknob indicate purpose, not accident. Better check your belongings, miss. It looks like a robbery to me. Why, I can't imagine why anybody would want to rob my stateroom. After all, there's nothing of any value here. Absolutely nothing. Maybe you better take a look through that trunk anyway. Something might be stolen. I haven't lost anything. I'm quite sure of that. Evident thief not interested in diamonds. Note, jewelry, untouched. Oh, they're phonies. The real ones are in my bank, I hope. Well, thank you all for coming to my rescue, more or less. No trouble at all. Sorry I couldn't have done more. Thanks. Let us know if anything else happens. We're in the next cabin. Uh, this is my father, Mr. Chan. My name's Lee. Uh, thank you both. So happy. Oh, by the way, if you don't mind, I just assume you didn't mention this to anyone. But don't you think if there's a thief on board, the purser ought to know about it? Oh, I don't want to answer a lot of useless questions. You see, I've been feeling perfectly miserable during this whole trip. But, Pop... I'm in identical boat with Fair Lady. We'll say nothing. Uh, thanks a lot. Please put muffler on peanut whistle and explain motive for appropriating towel. You see, Pop, I've been sort of collecting souvenirs since I left Honolulu. Some people pick up soap or ashtrays, but I like towels best. Hmm. What are you looking for? Lifeboat. Make fine souvenir also. Hotel Sheffield. 
Chateau Paris, Rhine Inn. Too late now to make restitution. But replace ships properly before Detective Father assigned to case of light fingered son. Okay. Say, Pop, speaking of cases, what do you think of that girl in the next cabin? Very pretty girl. You know, she hasn't been out of her cabin on the whole trip. The steward told me when I was asking him for some uh, fresh towels a while ago. I'll bet there's something funny going on there. What's the matter, Pop? One cabin too small for two detectives. I'm awfully sorry to bother you, but all that excitement has my head beating like a bass drum in a Harlem band. Have you any aspirin? Uh, come in. I'll get some for you. Please sit down. Oh, thanks. Here you are. Thanks a lot. Not at all. Do you intend staying in New York very long? No, darn it. Pop's in a hurry to get home to Mom. We leave for San Francisco in the morning. Well, that's pretty fast traveling. Too bad you're not going to stick around and see the big town. Yeah, but unless Pop takes a nap, I'll never get past the hotel lobby. <laughs> well, thanks again. Perhaps we'll see each other before we dock. Goodbye. Goodbye. Docking now. And between murders and suicides, I ain't got enough to do. So the commissioner says, go down to the dock and meet a detective. Who's got a cigarette? Hey, Smitty! So I said to the commissioner, I have already met a detective once, and he says to me, you just think you have. Thanks very much. Now go down and meet Charlie Chan. Look, Smitty, have the band blast out something oriental. Hey, what is the Chinese national anthem, anyway? I don't know. Why don't you give him Chinatown, my Chinatown? Okay, we'll play it. Hiya, Nelson. I knew there was something fresh around here. I thought it was the ocean air. Looks like you got half a headquarters down here. What's up? Looking for the other half. Expect someone to steal the Atlantic? No. The boys are going waiting. So have you got a license? Hmm. Here comes the number one bloodhound of journalism. Your sarcasm isn't cutting into his salary much. I guess you're down here to interview Mr. Chan. Always the copper, aren't you? It's nice work if you can get it. Well, come on, we'll give you a police escort so you don't fall off the pier. Yeah, we'll be glad to get home again. There's a guy, come on. Get in there before the boys crowd in. Look, Pop, they're going to snap our pictures. Oh, uh, is it true you intend racing Indian King in Saratoga? Oh, How do you horses win race. all the races? They run fast. How many wives have you? More than Alibaba had feet. Oh, oh, boy, boy, I stand back. You think you're going to like New York? It's one half as ridiculous as I've heard as you look. How long do you expect to remain in the United States? Uh, I don't know. They bring all of your stable with you. Look out! Thanks. Give me that camera! No one's taking any pictures of me! Okay, sue me. If it isn't little Billy. What are you doing back in town? Mr. Chan? That is humble name. I'm Inspector Nelson, Mr. Chan. Greetings from New York's finest. The big wigs expect you to tear a duck apart with them tonight. So sorry. Tell me again, please. You'll have to excuse the inspector's broken English, Mr. Chan. He's a Brooklyn immigrant. He's trying to tell you that the police department's giving a banquet tonight in your honor. Thank you so much. I'm unworthy of so great honor. Will feel like sparrow perched on limb with peacocks. I don't get you. 
He says he accepts. Your interpreter? In big city, yes. Uh, otherwise, uh, number one son, Lee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got a much on, Mr. Chan. If there's anything you want, the big wigs can't rustle up for you. Just toot your whistle. Speed pattern of the bullet. I wonder if that was a personal crack at me. New York English, too baffling for humble detective. <laughs> oh, yeah, those pencil pushers sure kick it around, don't they? Come on, Mr. Chan, we'll take care of your baggage. Is this all your baggage, Mr. Chan? All here. Open luggage for gentlemen's inspection. That won't be necessary, Mr. Chan. The commissioner has extended you the freedom of the port. Oh, much honored. Right this way, Mr. Chan. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know the little lady, Miss Bronson? Quite casually. Why, Inspector? A year ago, that little dame was so hot in this town, she had to skip the country. Grand jury wanted her as a key witness. She had enough info to blow the lid right off this island. Some of her boyfriends shipped her abroad till things cooled off. What did I tell you, Pop? A lot of funny things happened on the boat. Please keep eyes open and mouth shut. Oh, Porter. Yes, miss? Please have my baggage sent to the Carlton Hotel also. Certainly, miss. Your name, please? Broadway, aren't you? Oh, no, Billy. Just the smartest. Sometimes you make it hard to tell where your brain ends and your nerve begins. Maybe. But while every other newspaper guy on that dock follows an Indian Maharaja who can't make anything but the sport page, I'm riding around with Billy Bronson, the gal who can make history. Look, Steve, just forget you ever saw me. I'm not here for publicity. What are you here for, honey? I want to see Grant's tomb. And get a swell view of it from the river. What do you mean by that crack? I'm not hot anymore and you know it. Yeah, but does the DA know it? I didn't come back to see the DA. I've got a date with somebody else. That wouldn't be a guy by the name of Burke at the Hottentot Club, would it? You get around, don't you? Yeah, and it's a big circle. So you're going to have a showdown with Burke, huh? If you print that, you better put on your diving suit. I'll take that chance if it's okay with you. Here's your hotel. Listen, Speed, if you can keep quiet for a while, I may slip you something you'll have to print on asbestos. What's the deal? Meet me here at midnight. It's a date. Drive me to the bulletin. Don't get up, boys. I can make it. You just think you can make it. Better lay off, Joan. He's vicious. I just got tossed out. I've got the pass key. I want to see Murdoch. Just a moment, Miss Wendell. Save me an extra column on Sunday, will you, Chief? I got a swell human interest yarn on the Maharaja of Rodford today. Do you think the subscribers can stand the excitement? Yes. Miss Wendell would like to see you, sir. I can't see her now. You can if you look up. Hello, Murdoch. High speed. What do you want, Miss Wendell? A hundred bucks. I think you'd better see a doctor. You're delirious. Yeah, and I'll drop in at the psychopathic ward and hold your hand later, sweetheart. Okay, have your little joke. But would you like to take a peek at this beautiful enlargement before I sell it to the Times? I got a dozen pictures of Charlie Chan. Maybe, but if you look close, you'll see a girl, and it isn't Chan's daughter. Billy Bronson, eh? I got a dozen pictures of her, too. Sure, and I've got a dozen editors who'd love to know that I took this picture today. I'll give you $50. It was awfully nice seeing you. Wait a minute. Give me that photo. Instruct the cashier to pay Miss Wendell $100. I want you to forget that you ever took this picture. The mind's a complete blank. I suppose you remember the way to the cashier's office. And how. Thanks, Murdoch. So long, Speed. See you later. You were down at that pier today, Speed. Didn't you see Miss Bronson? Sure. 
I thought I was the only one who did. I even jumped in a cab and had a little chat with her. I don't want to pry into the affairs of this newspaper, but would you mind telling me why you kept it a secret? Because she didn't spill anything. I'm going to see her tonight and get the lowdown. Yes? Who? Huh? Put her on. Hello, Miss Bronson. Yes, I heard you were back in town. You remember that little deal we discussed about a year ago? That's right. Well, we may be able to do business now, but it's going to cost you twice what you offered last time. Why, that's insane. How do I know it's on the level? I haven't even read it. Fine. I'll be over at your hotel at 11.30 tonight. Goodbye. You can call off your date for tonight, Speed. I'm taking over the Bronson story. Now look here, Chief. I started this thing. Yes, and I'll finish it. And I'll make it hotter than the Chicago fire. Okay. But look out, you don't get burned. Nice scoop, kid. Scooping you is getting monotonous, Mr. Patton. Well, how about marrying me? And kill a beautiful friendship? Nothing doing. I tell you what, you take me to the Hot and Tot Club tonight and we'll blow some of this hush money. Why the Hot and Tot? Why not? You got me. Anyway, I'd better stick with you or I'll be scooped on my own love story. I'll be sure you keep your mouth shut. Don't worry. It'll cost me my job if I don't. Hey, Pop, who are you? Frustrated on the floor. What are you doing, Pop? Hiding? The collar button is one who hides. <laughs> I'm searching for things. I'd help you, Pop, but you said one room too small for two detectives. Assistance, very welcome. On present difficult case. You'll find it. If you go about it scientifically. Logic, very good. Plainly saw a fugitive sitting here. Turn back on same while searching for trousers. Number one son pass by trunk while parent descend body into trousers. Return here and collar button absconded. Also, number one son. Thank you so much. One room still too small for two detectives. Say, Pop, can I have a couple of weeks allowance in advance? I only have one buck to see the town on. New York, like mouth of Great River. Many reefs in channel to wreck small sightseeing boat from Honolulu. Oh boy, 20 bucks. Thanks, Pop. Don't worry, I can take care of myself. New York's no different from any other town. It's just a little bigger. Sorry, buddy. Well, that's all right. Cab, sir? Please. Me too. Pop, my money's gone. I know. The man who just bumped into me, he must have taken it. Save breath for lamentations. Your cab, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, suggest you return to room and lock self in before dinner suit snatched from body. But gee, Pop. Good night. Ask the hotel, please. Mr. Chan's room, please. Bronson. 
Well, I'm in trouble again. I can't unlock my door. But, but that's our room. Oh, well, how do you like that? I've got the right location, but they let me over the wrong floor. I'm in 413. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like you're all dressed up to do the town tonight. No, not exactly. I, I'm waiting for Dad to get back from the banquet so I can show him the town. <laughs> well, I hope you have a good time. Good night. Good night. The young lady that just left, did you hear her say where she was going? She mentioned the Hottentot Club. Thanks. The Hottentot Club. Mr. Moran, you haven't been around for quite a while. Oh, I've been around. Wait a minute. When did you get back in town? This afternoon. Did Burke send for you? Well, what if he did? I just wanted to know. Listen, Buzz. I've got a good reason for coming back. You've got a better reason for staying away. You get out of town before morning. I mean that. Okay. I will. Sure you will. I'm ah, sorry, boss. You all can't go in there. What's the idea? There's someone inside I've got to see. The rules of the house say no gentleman allowed in without a lady friend. You can't button that one. It's a freckle. My mistake, honey. I signed his check. Is it okay? He's a phony. Get his dough. Hiya, Johnny. Hello. Evening, Johnny. Hiya, Speed. Hello, Miss Wendell. Hello, Mr. Burke. You got a lot of competition around here tonight, kid? I can't complain. Their pictures make the family album. Mine make the front page. Say, did you ever figure on this camera night idea of yours causing a lot of beefs? About what? It's a known fact that somebody's wife will go out with somebody else's husband. Where are they? <laughs> you know, I haven't seen you here in months. Any special reason for tonight's visit? No, just slumming. That's right. And you can be the perfect host by supplying me with a nice, juicy story. A murder, for instance. That always goes good in a nightclub yarn. Sure, and I'll even take your picture standing next to the body. And if they're good, I'll buy a dozen.
don't yell like that. I, I'm not going to hurt you. Gosh, I'm sorry I scared you. What do you want? I'm here on something awful important. Maybe you can help me. You see, I'm sort of a detective. That is, my dad is Charlie Chan, and I work with him on big cases. Charlie Chan? Well, I know who he is. Then will you help me? What can I do? Get me in the club. I've got to see somebody. All right. As soon as I get some more film, I'll take you down the back stairs. Swell. Oh, let me help. <laughs> Go for our ballerina, don't you, Mr. Burke? I like her dancing. That dame could appear in a wheelchair and he'd call it dancing. Good idea, Johnny. I don't get you. I told you to keep Billy Bronson out of town. She's in Europe. She's upstairs in your office. I didn't know that. You know it now. She comes back when I say so. Sure, sure. I'll take care of that, Dame. Waiter, bring me some more milk. Yes, Mr. Moran. Doing encore, baby. Okay. Wait here, Joan. Say, you're not holding anything out of me, are you? Take it easy, honey. I'll be right back. Hello, Johnny. What are you doing in town? I got lonesome. Aren't you glad to see me? Sure, I am, but it's risky. You know, you're still hot enough to blister. I'll take my chances. How's everything with you? Not so good. Yeah, that's what you wrote me. But I saw an awful lot of cover charges when I came in tonight. What's on your mind, Billy? Why did you lie to me? I don't get you. Oh, yes, you do. You didn't want me back in New York. I told you I wasn't safe. Oh, skip it. I walked through the whole police force today, and all they did was tip their hats. No, Johnny, you fooled me long enough. Cutting down my dough so I didn't have enough money to buy a ticket back home. Saying the club was failing. Lying about everything. You talk too much, Billy. Yeah, well, I haven't even started yet. And I don't think I would if I were you. I'm afraid the boys wouldn't like it. You mean Marie wouldn't like it? Leave her out of this. Why should I? You've been giving me the runaround because of her. That's why I came back. Things have been too perfect for you. Okay, Johnny. You're a smart boy. And you've bluffed a lot of people. But you can't bluff your way out of what I'm going to spill. Well, you little double-crosser, I'll slap Stay you. Stay away from me. Where are you going, Mary? Charlie's office. Listen, he's, he's busy right now. I think you better wait. Oh, yeah? Maybe you can order the bus boys around, but not me. Now, listen. Police of New York and Honolulu have one thing in common. They both live on very small islands. But while we have big volcano, you have biggest shakeup. <laughs> uh, someday, I hope to greet honorable brothers in Hawaii, where roar of surf replaced noise of subway, and uh, hot rhythm of Broadway cooled by strains of aloha. Here goes my fishing trip, and I was all set to get away in the morning. I've just been called on a little case uptown, Charlie. I think you'd better come along. Now, what's the idea of taking our guest of honor away? Can't you handle it alone? Maybe not. Billy Bronson was just murdered at the Hottentot Club. And Mr. Chan's son is being held as a suspect. We go right away. Excuse, please. Of course, Charlie. Excuse.
Where's the trouble? Upstairs. Have you got a cigarette? I don't smoke. Metropolitan newspaper people, more prompt than police, and also more numerous. Oh, those, those ain't reporters, they're worse. Camera hounds. This is candid camera night. They're all shooting for prizes. They've even got a dark room for them so they can develop and enlarge their pictures right here. Very interesting. Camera, remember many things human eye forget. Huh? You're right. Don't let anyone out of here with a camera. I want every roll of film in the place. Yes, sir. I'll carry it. Good night, Mr. Moran. Good night. Hi, Nelson. Hello, Mr. Chan. Well, uh, you didn't waste any time getting here, did you? Somebody has to protect the taxpayers. All the policemen I know were at a banquet tonight. When you gotta eat, you gotta eat. Have you seen the body? Seen it, I found it. Good, that makes you a suspect. Flatterer. Over there, Doc. I knew I'd be seeing you on business sooner or later. Pop, tell him who I am. What is charge against young men? We found him hanging around in the hall outside. He says he's your son. Reluctantly confess. He is potion of posterity. Oh, yeah? Then what was he doing peeking through a keyhole? Humbly suggest murderer not likely to go outside and contemplate victim through keyhole. But please explain embarrassing presence here. She was trying to get into our room at the hotel. So I followed her. That kid's okay, release him. Lay off that phone. Don't touch anything in this office. I got a right to call my lawyer. What makes you think you'll need one? He'll need one with you handling the case. You and your funny ideas. I got an idea right now, and believe me, it's far from funny. What'd you find, Doc? The bullet entered the back just below the left shoulder blade, passed through the right ventricle, and was probably stopped by a bone. We can't get the bullet until the autopsy. Yeah, okay. Uh, excuse, please. Can give approximate time of death? About half an hour ago. Thank you. Half an hour ago, I was thinking of bass instead of bullets. Anybody find the gun? I did, sir. It was a 25 caliber automatic. The sergeant sent it down to headquarters to check the number and any fingerprints. Good. I want this whole room going over for fingerprints. I've headquarters sent a man up. Yes, sir. May I ask a question, please? Sure, go ahead. Uh, understand you were first to discover body. That's right. Well, go ahead, Nelson. Give me the third degree. But I warn you, if anybody slugs me across the Adam's apple with a rubber hose... Ah, you talk too much as it is. Body in the same position now as when discovered? Sure, I didn't touch it. I had to leave something for him to do. Thank you so much. Position of body sometimes gives solution of murder. So sorry to intrude. But like number one son, keep forgetting this not my affair. Gee, Pop, I was only trying to find out what she was doing. Obviously, she kept appointment with murder. And that brings us around to you. I ain't saying a thing without my lawyer. Maybe we got different ideas about that. Billy Brunson come up here to see you, didn't she? So do a lot of other people. But they don't all get murdered. Stop me if I'm wrong. She could come up to visit Johnny without him killing her, couldn't she? You ought to know. What do you mean by that, Crack? You and Billy were friends until she had a blow town. Then, like a good little pal, you move in on her boyfriend here just to keep him from getting lonesome. After a year, he gets fed up with you and he sends for Billy. Is that on the level? No, he's just fishing. I wish I was. Well, anyhow, Billy hits town, beats it up to see you, and you bump her off. That's a lie. She was all right when we left the room. Then you were in this room with her, both of you. Tell him, Johnny. I ain't talking. No, you see? He could alibi if he wanted to, but he won't. He'll let you take the rap. That's what happens to his dames when he gets in a jam. It won't happen to me. Shut up. You killed her with his gun. You're crazy. He put me out of the room. Then he killed oh, her. Oh, no, he didn't. I waited in the hall. You couldn't have dragged me away from that door. He only stayed inside a minute, and I saw her when he came out. And she was still alive? I'll say she was, and mad. Now, wait a minute. In other words, you both leave the room. She's all alone. She gets so mad, she shoots herself in the back and then hides the gun. Now, don't tell me that. We ain't telling you anything until we get a lawyer. Interruption, please. Perhaps keyhole observation made by number one son can prove if ladies speak truth? No. She was dead when I looked in. Say, how did you know she was up here? I didn't. I was just looking in all the keyholes. Say, what's the idea? I can't get out of this joint. You can after I've seen your pictures. Give. I only enlarged one, but it's a honey. You see, I came up here and found the body. He says he did. It was my turn to do the scooping, darling. Well, as Mr. Chan would say, one picture worth 10,000 words. Thank you so much. Say, Mr. Chan, take a look at this. That napkin isn't in the picture. Also interesting to note, Telephone jump back on hook since picture taken. You're right. 
Was that phone on or off the hook when you found the body? It was off. I put it back on. Well, that's just ducky. You know, there might have been some fingerprints on there. I'm sorry, Nelson. But when I saw it was off the hook, I thought Billy might have been talking to someone. When nobody answered, I went ahead and phoned in my story. Do you use a napkin when you phone? Why? Should I? Don't evade the issue. When did you pick up that napkin and put it on the tray? I never touched it. If it isn't asking too much, can I have a picture back now so I can get out of here? One moment, please. Observe the picture more closely. Dummy! Where's Burke? I got him, Mr. Nelson. Ah. What happened to you? Someone slugged me. But I'm all right now, sir. I'll have to take your word for it. Get headquarters. Send out an alarm for Johnny Burke. I want him picked up before morning. Yes, sir. I'm going to get you 10 years for putting out those lights. Who, me? Yes, you. Did Burke get away clean? Well, what do you think? Hey, come here. Stop yelling, will you? I've got to pull that story into the office. It puts the finger right on Burke. If you touch that phone again, I'm going to put five fingers on you. Now, get out of here and use the one downstairs. Now, let's and take that dame with you. And the picture? That's evidence. Beat it. Come on, honey. They want to be alone. Speaking of pictures, Charlie, what were you going to show me when Burke took a powder? First, must point to fact that napkin on tray also take powder. Well, I'll be. Now, why would Bert take that napkin? Picture may hold answer to same riddle. Observe carefully. Contents of unfortunate lady's purse scattered on floor. Yeah. Compare articles now on floor with those shown in picture. Say, wait a minute. There's no key there, but there's one in the picture. Missing key may fit door to solution. Looks like a hotel key. There's a tag on it. Perhaps can decipher number? Yeah. It says Carlton Hotel 313. Gee, Pop, that's our room. Yes. What? Who's got a cigarette? Never mind. We'll get some at your hotel. Come on. Even if I knew where Burke went, I wouldn't tell you. And you can't hold me. Pipe down. You stay out here with her. Key, please. Stabbed through the ribs not over a couple of minutes ago either. Get the coroner. Pop! It's the man we met this morning on the boat when someone tried to rob Miss Bonson's stateroom. You know this guy? Encountered him once only on board steamship. Take him to the bed and search him. Well, I wonder where he fits in. Hey, Mac, anything out there? Nothing, sir. Well, that's not good enough. Climb out and take a look in every window as you go below. And no matter what you see, remember, it's Burke you're looking for. I wish the fishing season was as open as the one for murder. Excuse, please. Would suggest Key undergo fingerprint examination. Right, Charlie. That may be the one from Billy Bronson's purse. Anything on him? No, sir. Maybe the steamship company would have his name. Oh, chances are he'd be listed under a phony title, but we'll check that later. Take this down to the Bureau of Identification. Have them check any fingerprints they may find against Johnny Burks. His are on file. Yes, sir. This whole thing is getting me a little bit screwy. What would that mug want in your room? Mud of bewilderment now beginning to clear from pool of thought. This man followed Miss Bronson on boat to secure unknown objects she possessed. To safeguard same, she used my baggage as hiding place. I remember, Pop. That's when she came in for the aspirin. Huh? Have hit tack on cranium. Tonight, Miss Bronson tried to regain secret possession here. But number one, son, proves stumbling block. Then Burke gets your key when it drops from Billy's purse. Comes up here. In time to catch that guy in the room. The rest is easy. He stabs him and makes a getaway with whatever they were all after. Quite possible. But what were they after? Get 
in there. It's Nelson. You're going to let me out of here. You know this man? He's, he's my husband. Your husband, hey? What's his name? Tom Mitchell. Now we're getting somewhere. Were you living with him? No. You left him for Burke, didn't you? I'm not talking. You don't have to. I get the whole setup. Well, why don't you deny it? Please. Perhaps kinder to question lady later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, gentlemen. Take her down to headquarters. Come on, lady. Keep her in my office. I'll see you later. Now, what I want to know, Chuck. What have we got now? Most interesting reading found on torn paper. This is something. So Billy kept a diary too. Pop, that's what they were after. No poison more deadly than ink. I'd give up that fishing trip to see the rest of these pages. Hey, hey, Pop! Gee, I, I thought you were someone else. Put that thing away. Did you find anything? No, sir, and I went all the way down to the bottom. Say, do you think he might have gone up? Why? Well, I just remembered. Miss Bronson said her room was 413, and that's right above us. What? Regret slow progress of thought, but rejoice at final arrival. Get out on that fire escape and keep your eye on the window above. Come on. Hello, Nelson. This is a surprise. I'll say it is. What are you doing here? What would I be doing here? I'm waiting for Miss Bronson, of course. And you got an awful long wait. She's not coming back. She's dead? Murdered. I'm not surprised. Wait a minute. You've got some explaining to do. What about, may I ask? Billy Bronson was shot an hour ago at the Hottentot Club. The key to room 313, which is directly below this one, was stolen from her purse. We just went in down there and found a man stabbed to death. Go on. You go on. That window there is open, so is the one downstairs. So I could have killed that man down there, then come up the fire escape into this room. Right. Wrong. I didn't. I had an appointment to meet Miss Bronson here at 10.30. It's now 20 minutes of 11. Excuse, please. Would object to revealing nature of appointment? Not at all. I came up here to buy her diary. Diary, eh? What were you going to do with it? I'd have to read it first to answer that question. But no doubt can produce money intended for purchase of diary. Gee, Pop, look at that. There's enough dough here to buy the city hall. And cheap at that. Miss Bronson's diary contains enough information on rackets and politics to blow this whole city higher than a kite. Well, well, what's this? The payoff? Always a wise guy, aren't you? I have to be to keep up with you boys. Why don't you like some place where you can be found? Hey, get a load of this. We scoop the others? Sure. You know, you ought to drop in at the office once in a while, Chief. You were out when I phoned that story in. You knew I was coming here. Yeah, but you crossed me up. You weren't due here till 11.30. Just a minute. You told us 10.30. Please don't attempt any unwieldy deductions, Nelson. The original appointment was for 11.30. Miss Bronson telephoned and changed it. Most unfortunate. Proof of alibi now locked behind dead lips of murdered girl. Yeah, and I'm not so sure you didn't get that diary without paying for it. You wouldn't mind being searched, would you, Murdoch? Am I under arrest? No. Then I'm afraid that technically you'll have to keep your hands in your own pockets. Am I right? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Well, come on, let's have it. Swell. Swell. Now let Marie Collins go and trail her. She'll lead you to Burke, all right. The key didn't show anything, Charlie, but the gun we found in Burke's office was sold to Billy Bronson a year ago. There are two sets of fingerprints on it, a woman's and Johnny Burke's. We'll pick up Burke tonight, and I'll be fishing in the morning. Then I presume that my part in this case is closed. Perhaps. 
But murder case like revolving door. When one side close, other side open. Well, good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. So much. I wish you hadn't moved us up here, Pop. I bet there's some clue in our old room that would clinch the case. What are you reading, Pop? Murder case of Miss Billy Bronson. Gee, I should think you know enough about it already. Still much to learn. Mr. Speed Patton, very good reporter. Is my name in his write-up? As suspect, yes. Good night. <clears throat> The whole case looks perfectly clear to me, Pop. They found Burke's fingerprints on the gun, didn't they? Evident to forget disappearance of napkin. You know, I've been thinking about that napkin, too. Burke probably stole it because Marie Collins's fingerprints were on it. Have you thought of that angle? <clears throat> For the time being, only consider which angle to arrange self on matters. <sighs> now, please. Turn out light and extinguish conversation. <sighs> Hello. Hello, Mika. Did you get my message? Yeah, yeah, I'm in a jam. I'll say it's bad. You get up here as quick as you can to see that you're not tailed. What? Yeah, I'm expecting Marie. She ought to be up here right away. Uh-huh. Step on it. Hello, Hot Fingers. What do you mean, Hot Fingers? If you'd kept Billy out of town, like I said, we'd have been okay. Too bad it had to happen in your office, Johnny. Oh, no, you don't. They'll never burn me for that. I'll say they won't. You watch your step, Buzz. I will. Almost 24 hours have elapsed since Billy Bronson and Thomas Mitchell were murdered, the police have discovered nothing tangible enough to justify an arrest. All they have is a torn diary page found by Charlie Chan, which they consider an excellent clue. But in the opinion of this observer, it only indicates the work of a perfect criminal, so clever and daring that he has deliberately planted it to obtain free publicity for a terrific blackmailing scheme. This may be a subtle way of warning certain people in New York that he has this dynamite diary and is ready to light the feud. I wonder if Johnny Burke is the only racketeer whose blood pressure will remain high as long as the Bronson diary and its unknown possessor are in circulation. Well, how's that for a journalistic gem? Is that what you call it? Why not? A boy. And wait till you see tomorrow's story. It'll top this one. Take that to Mr. Murdoch, will you? Just stick around me, honey, and you'll get the latest lowdown. You know old speed never misses. Neither does Johnny Burke, a Moran. You're going to crack wise once too often on that typewriter of yours, and I'll be sending you posies. Now, stand still and look healthy. How's this? Fine. I want to shoot you before somebody else does. You're just sore because I scooped you on that Bronson murder. Well, I'm warning you right now. I'm going to scoop you on the rest of the case, too. Want to bet? Sure. A week's pay. Make it something worthwhile and you're on. There's one time you're both scooped. Johnny Burke just walked into police headquarters and gave himself up. Five will get you 50. He's got a smart mouthpiece with him. Now, wait a minute. You haven't a thing on Johnny except the fingerprints on the gun. Oh, yeah, that's all. And the fact that Mitchell was rubbed out a couple of minutes after Burke took it on the lamb from the Hottentot. I didn't shoot Billy or Mitchell either. May I humbly remind Mr. Mitchell stabbed, not shot? Now, don't you try to trick Johnny into admitting one thing by suggesting another. I demand the right Have to... you got a cigarette? Uh, yes, here. Thanks very much. Now, what were you saying? I want to know what time Mitchell was rubbed out. Why don't you ask Johnny? If it was after 10 o'clock, he was with me. Now try and break that alibi. Excuse, please. Perhaps paraffin test. Better alibi if proved negative. You're right. How about it, Johnny? You're not afraid of a little scientific test, are you? No. Let's go. Wait a minute. You can't get away with this. My client is a respectable citizen. Let's go. Johnny, please, wait a minute. Hey. Uh, say, just what is this paraffin test? Uh, new method to reveal powder marks on hand that fires gun. 
Well, that's silly. He washes his hands, you know. Undoubtedly. But even most vigorous scrubbing will not remove powder stains for 72 hours. 72 hours? Nelson can't get away with this. It's a direct violation of... Keep your hand under that water. It's okay now. Paraffin's hard enough. Take it easy. You're pulling the skin off my hand. Skin isn't all this will pull off. If there's any gunpowder there, it'll be on the wax, too. Hey, what's that stuff? A solution of diphenylamine and sulfuric acid, which reacts instantly to nitrates. Watch those chemicals, Burke. If they turn blue, your goose is cooked. It's negative. Then you didn't shoot her. I told you I didn't. Get out of here, Burke, and take that shyster with you. Okay, don't get excited. Thanks a lot, Mr. Chan, for suggesting that test. Drop up to the club sometime. Thank you so much. May accept generous invitation as case progress. Well, that lets Burke out. Maybe. But this one case where murderer could have clean hands. Huh? Remember napkin that disappeared at nightclub? Yeah. Possibly used to cover hand that fire murder gun. Hey, you there, what happened? Come on, give us a little bit of time. How about a time? Wait, Johnny, how did you clear yourself? I keep my hands clean. How about a picture, Mr. Burke? Why not? I make sure you get that sign in with me. I want to prove I'm going out of here instead of coming in. We'll get it in all right. Okay. Bye, Thank you. Hey, where are you going? I want to sell this picture of Burke's release before he's arrested again. Come on, let's go see what the inspector's yeah, got. Good right. idea. Okay. What happened, Inspector? Yeah, did you give Burke a clean bill? What's your next move? Come on, Nelson, give us a lowdown. I've got nothing to say yet. What about you, Mr. Chan? Looks like Burke pulled a nifty on you. Perhaps. But release of Mr. Burke suggests other nifty. What have you got up your sleeve, Mr. Chan? Yeah, what's the new angle? Give us a lowdown. Now, yeah. just a minute, boys. If there is a new angle on this case, we'll try it out before you report as advertising. Come on, 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 Now, wait a minute, Burke. Nelson. I'm entitled to a break. I've been on this case since it started. So long. Out. Hey, give us a chance right. here, will you? Now, what was on your mind, Charlie? You have candid camera photos taken last night at Hottentop Club? Yeah, they're in the department files, but... Uh, please to send for same right away. Yeah, sure, yeah. Now, let's see. Burke and Miss Collins were standing there. Pop was right back here. I'm getting awfully tired, Lee. We've been going over this for more than an hour. But doesn't your intuition tell you anything? Pop says one woman's intuition better than ten scientists. I don't know anything about intuition. But I've got a feeling we ought to get out of here. Let's try it once again. Put yourself in the place of the murderer. Now, when the lights went out, he grabbed the napkin off the desk here and ran to the door. What are you doing up here? Why, why nothing. Beat it. Your old man sent you here, didn't he? No, sir. It was my own idea. <laughs> Throw him out. Hey, let me go! Hey! Hey, let me go! We're getting out of town, kid. What's the idea? You got nothing to worry about now. Yeah, that's what you think. Remember the crack the Chinese dick made about seeing us later? Yeah. Now we catch this kid up here monkeying around? Well, that's enough for me. We'll hop a plane for Chicago tonight and lay low the heat's off. But Johnny, don't you think that... There he is. Not so fast, Bert. Leave me alone. Take it easy, sister. What's the idea? It ain't my idea. It's Inspector Nelson's. Come on. Is 
special delivery, Mr. Murdoch. Oh, thanks. Inspector Nelson wants you. I'm ready. What do you think of them letting Burke go? Says they couldn't prove anything on him. Everybody but the cops knows he pulled the job. That's right, boss. Move over. Where do you think you're going? With you? This is a pinch. <sighs> a lead? Yes, Pop. Have already consumed own steak? No. I, I've got it here, on my eye. <laughs> Has the swelling gone down any? Cannot see through gravy. Puppet detective, perhaps now realize snooping very dangerous business. Hello, Mr. Patton. Hello. Hey, what did you run into? Mr. Burke. That's what I came up to warn you about, Mr. Chan. There's a rumor around town that certain people are out to get you, and they wouldn't be as easy on you as they were on your son. Uh, very good omen prove suspects getting worried. You've got a lot of nerve. But just the same, I'm sticking with you tonight. Why, anything might happen. Well, I did, kid. Excuse me for not knocking, Charlie, but the door was open. Well, Speed, here's your chance for another scoop. We'll all take a run down to the Hot and Tot Club, and as you just said, anything might happen. You mean it's a payoff? Maybe. Have you got a cigarette? Gosh, can I go too, Pop? Unfortunately, yes. Only way to save other eye. Hello, everybody. Well, Mr. Murdoch, can I send you a picture of yourself as a murder suspect? Don't be ridiculous. Where's Nelson? I can't waste all night here. I've got a newspaper to get out. It can wait. Now, look here, Nelson. You've gone too far with this. All right, all right. Keep quiet. Now, Mr. Chan has a few words to say to all of it, and I advise you to listen closely. Thank you so much. Excuse abrupt invitation here tonight, but all present seriously involved in death of Miss Billy Bronson and Thomas Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell followed Miss Bronson from Europe to secure diary which contain much scandal. Plan using the same to ruin Mr. Berg, who stole love of wife, Marie. That's plain downright collusion. I'm a respectable girl. Pardon, please. I'm not questioning respectability. Uh, merely offer proof of intimacy. Candid camera photo taken on night of crime. Triangle, very ancient motive for murder, but not only angle to present case. Sudden appearance of late Miss Bronson cause perspiration on brow of another gentleman. Name Buzz Moran. Wait a minute. I didn't even know she was in town. Contradiction, please. All right. I had better talk to her. But when I heard she was murdered, I didn't want to get mixed up in it, so I kept my mouth shut. Hmm. Sure, they had Johnny on the spot, so you had nothing to worry about. Shut up, Marie. Go ahead, Charlie. Miss Bronson came to this office last night. Mr. Burke, and then Miss Collins talked with her. Testimony state both people leave her alone for a few minutes. In same few minutes, someone murder her with gun wrapped in napkin to hide fingerprints. The arrival of a inquisitive girl photographer now create interruption. Murderer hide while girl photograph body with napkin off tray. 
girl then leave, and murderer return napkin to tray. After which, Mr. Patton enter, find body, and telephone story to Mr. Murdoch. By strange coincidence, Mr. Murdoch absent on trail of diary. Mr. Chan, may I ask if you have a picture of me in your invaluable collection? I regret. Distinguished features, only ones missing. Under the circumstances, I believe that exonerates me from having murdered Miss Bronson. Oh, yeah? How about Mitchell? Now, look here, Nelson. I've been very tolerant with you, but unless I'm released from this room instantly... Excuse, please. Before you remove honorable presence, would request letter received through mail tonight. What letter? My mail is very heavy. We're wasting time. You got a special delivery letter tonight. We've had your mail watched since yesterday. Hand it over. It's a page from Billy's diary. I wouldn't have printed it without your permission, Nelson. After all, it just arrived when your man came to pick me up. I haven't even read it through. Who sent it to you? How should I know? You know what I think, Murdoch? I think you sent it to yourself. Why, that's absolute... You've got that diary, you've always been after it. I charge you with the... Please, perhaps better to read contents of page before making arrest. Oh, all right. May 7th. Was up all night on a big party. Johnny swung for Lieutenant R of the Central Bureau when... You officers better wait outside. He's retiring from the force because the commissioner got wise to him. The big dummy showed everybody a diamond watch Buzz Moran gave him for certain important tip-offs that Johnny told me about. Been shooting your mouth off again, huh? I don't know how she found that out, Buzz. I never told her anything. All right, all right. Take it easy. It was sure funny to see everybody kowtow to Johnny and Buzz. I guess they don't know that the double-crosser who uses his newspaper job as a cover-up for the blackmailing he pulls is Speed Patton, the smoothest guy in the rackets. Just a minute. Let me see that. This is a phony. Can prove? Certainly. Why, even the paper it's written on. Go ahead. Hey, what is this? You are murderer of Bill Bronson and Thomas Mitchell. You're crazy. Beg to differ, Mr. Patton. First suspicion arrive after reading your newspaper story of Billy Bronson crime. You state the victim shot in back. Quite true. Yet photographs show body face upward. Only murderer could know location of hidden wound. Then, fearing discovery of own fingerprints on napkin, when attention called to it through photo taken by young lady, you remove same as lights go out and Mr. Burke escape. You are indeed clever man, but not smart enough to avoid ancient trap set tonight. Inspector Nelson and humble self plant bogus diary page on Mr. Murdoch. And you were the only one who swallowed the bait. You'll never convict me on that. Contradiction, please. To know forgery, one must have original. Well, come on. Why don't you deny it? All right. I did it. I killed them both. I overheard Billy tell Burke that she was going to the DA and blow the lid off his town. Well, that would have meant me, too. I offered her plenty to keep quiet, but she wouldn't take it. So I killed her. You almost caught me, Joan, when you walked in and found Billy dead. If you had, I... I guess I'd have killed you, too. Just as I did Mitchell when I caught him in that hotel room. He already had found the diary, and I had to get it. Well, that's the story. Nelson wouldn't have caught me in a million years. I was sitting pretty until you got too smart for me, Mr. Chan. You're the one I can thank for being in this spot, and here's how I'm going to show my gratitude. All right, boys, take him down to headquarters. You okay, son? I'm all right. Charlie, Billy's diary is somewhere in Patton's apartment, and that's all I need to put that guy on ice. Come on. Well, thanks to you, Charlie, there's the baby that's going to sweep Broadway cleaner than it's been since the Indians sold it. Uh, most happy to have placed a new broom in hands of Father Knickerbocker. Yeah. 
Say, I'm sorry you're going home, Charlie. How about staying an extra week as guests to the commissioner and myself? Gee, Pop, let's do it. I never did get to see Broadway. Oh, holy mackerel, look, another mouse. <laughs> Perhaps better to return to Honolulu. Evidently, Broadway very hard on eyes. I uh, think you got something there, Charlie. <laughs>